NBA All-Star Weekend in Toronto this weekend, Valentine's Day. If you want to take uh, your girl out for a wonderful night, you take her to a sports bar, you buy her beer, and you say, honey, let's watch the All-Star game, because that is a fantastic Valentine's Day. Am I right? Is it the, is it the All-Star three-point challenge and everything? Friday, that Saturday, day? Sunday. No, uh, All-Star game Sunday, uh, three-point shooting, dunk contest Friday, Saturday, all in uh, the great North of Toronto. Uh, <laughs> Francis, we're going to talk about some all-star snubs, but first let's take a look for everybody so everyone's caught up to date on who the Eastern Conference NBA all-stars are. LeBron James, Paul George, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, Kyle Lowry, Jimmy Butler, who probably will be replaced, obviously, with a knee injury, DeMar DeRozan, Paul Millsap. The hashtag is not hashtag Andre Drummond. It's first-time selection Andre Drummond. Chris Bosh, John Wall, and first-time selection Isaiah Thomas. We move forward. To, I think I put the snubs or did I put the Western? There it is, the Western. Kobe, Kevin Durant, Kawhi's first time on the team. Steph Curry, Russell Westbrook, Draymond's first time on the team. James Harden, Chris Paul, Clay Thompson, Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins, and LaMarcus Aldridge. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins, not LaMarcus Cousins, whatever though. <laughs> uh, head coach Greg Popovich, and the head coach for the uh, East is Tyron Lue, which is hilarious. But the NBA Eastern Conference All-Star snubs. This is where it gets interesting, right? So... Uh, from Sports Illustrated, their five biggest snubs were Al Horford, Kevin Love, Kemba Walker, Reggie Jackson, and Pau Gasol. Now, the voting in terms of the polling, in terms of the NBA.com, in terms of who thought they who they thought were the biggest snubs, Kevin Love received the most with 34%, Pau Gasol 31%, and Kemba Walker 21% in terms of those, and the rest was other. Uh, let's talk about quickly Kevin Love. Pau Gasol and, and Kemba Walker. Pau Gasol, as Andre Snow as we put it, portable. The guy is efficient in any team he plays for. He adapts to who he needs to play for. He's great in the front court. He's consistent, although all of his numbers have slipped off a little bit in terms of uh, in about the same minutes, especially his per 36-minute numbers. In Kemba Walker's case, the guy had, I think it's a recency bias with Kemba Walker because it was only January where that he started scoring in, in volume. After a lot of injuries happened to the to the Charlotte Hornets, he stepped up and started taking a lot more shots for his. Uh, not in a, in a fortunate turn, a lot of them started going in. Yeah, Kemba Walker won Eastern Conference Player of the Month, uh, Player of the Week, uh, twice this season, uh, and they came after hot streaks. Kemba Walker's not an All Star this year. Um, and then lastly, Kevin Love. Kevin Love looks great under Tyron Lue, but Kevin Love looked lost under David Blatt, and. It seemed that his numbers weren't in the right places for him to be an all-star this year. And I'm kind of happy Kevin Love isn't an all-star. Because if he was, he would have been voted in by, it would have been more of a fan voted in thing. Opposed to, like, if you go back to the card for the Eastern Conference starters. All right, so with Kevin Love, it's tough because you look at the forward positions and, you know, yes, he's better than Carmelo Anthony this year for sure. But not Paul George, not LeBron James, not Paul Millsap, and not Chris Bosh. So, for me, I don't think the East got snubbed, really. The West is more interesting. Francis, your thoughts, though? With Kevin Love, it's, a, it's interesting because when you look at the Eastern Conference, it's, it's weird that you see what, like two players from the Raptors through from different teams, and you see one player from the best team in the East. You know what I mean? Like, you mm -hmm. see LeBron James holding down the fort for the Cavs, whereas point. you expect to see a team that is top of that conference have more representation. Now, Kevin Love, as you just mentioned there, right. I don't think he thrived as well. He almost looked disorientated. And I've stated here that it's almost like his limitations as a defender is is perhaps one way why they are not including him in this. I mean, in terms of scoring, we know Kevin Love is a, a, a tremendous scorer, great from the three-point line. But the thing is, you just mentioned it. There was a lot of players contributing specifically for their own team. Carmelo Anthony, I think, has been a huge factor this season in stepping up his game and why the Knicks are looking like they're going to have a better season. Yeah. Of course. We've been on a... Com uh, combined with... It's been a dark stretch, but... It's been, uh, he's been struggling recently, but I'm talking about when, 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 he's, guys, on, when well, he's looking you're right. stronger. You're right. When he's, when you've got to take the positives as they come. This is the year. first season I'd actually say Carmelo Anthony's not an overrated player in the league. Uh, and obviously the fans still love him because he uh, gets voted into the All-Star game. And the coaches still love him because he gets voted into the All-Star The All-Star game is made up of uh, the, the fans vote for the starters, but the yeah. coaches vote for the reserves. Yeah. Um, and it works out by you, you, you pick, the coaches pick two backcourt, three frontcourt, and two wild cards. So it's interesting which way they lean, especially in a guard-heavy league. 
But you're right about Carmelo. This year, with him on the floor, the Knicks are roughly 500. Without him, they are atrocious. They yeah. are, I think, 3-10. and 10. It's bad. Yeah. He's missed even 13 games. But at one point, they were 0-7 without Melo on the floor. To the Western Conference and to the snubs. Because this is where I get angry. Uh, Dirk Nowitzki, Damian Lillard, DeAndre Jordan, Timmy Duncan, Tim Duncan, and Gordon Hayward. Uh, there's one name that specifically stands out on this list, and it's a crying shame that he's not on the All-Star team this year. But the talk on two of the legends, I'm surprised Dirk and Tim Duncan don't get voted in because what if this is their last season? You know, Kobe yeah. obviously has the retirement tour, and if we've accepted that the All-Star game is an arbitrary award, an arbitrary if you're an all-star game starter, it's an arbitrary award because the fans vote you in, so you can't use that as an accolade to define your career. Because mm -hmm. Kobe Bryant's not an all-star this year, but the fans love him, so he gets an all-star game not. That's fine. But how is that fair not give Tim and Dirk Nowitzki, who it very much could be their last year, we just don't know that. Well, what they said here <coughs> on this is that if Kobe Bryant did not dominate uh, the fan voting process, they think then makes it. Draymond Green might slip in as a starter, an extra spot opens up. For the Mavericks, 13th time, all time, all time star, total, total tie, time, 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 star forward. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. So uh, that, that's the only, pro that's the way if the process, if Kobe didn't, wasn't in such high demand this season because of his retirement tour and everything else, then maybe Dirk Nowitzki could have came in if a few places were to move. Like Draymond Green, I mean, could be in a shout for a starting position. He's been phenomenal this season. He's leading triple doubles. He's the best so. passing forward in the league. He's the best passing front court player in the league. And in terms of Draymond Green, okay. Draymond Green's averaging over seven assists a game. Uh, that's better than 80% uh, of the guards in the mm -hmm. league. He's like, I think, ninth or tenth. They are assist. phenomenally better. In assist better, better as a him. forward. That's yeah. ridiculous. They're phenomenally better with um, him. Yes, they, he is the Scottie Pippen to that team. Mm -hmm. um, different type of player, though. Now, Tim Duncan. The argument for Tim Duncan was defensive. Uh, and then he's been out as well for a while. Hmm, he has he's been, been out recently. Well, they pop rest him strategically. He's old, man. Tim Duncan's old. J uh, defensively, Tim Duncan, uh, per every advanced. Analytic is the best defender in the league right now. He's not going to win Defensive Player of the Year, but still, I think it's amazing, a testament to just how consistent he's been. Tim Duncan should be on every All-Star team. He should be on the Eastern Conference All-Stars, too, because that's how good Tim Duncan is. <laughs> uh, but, all right, to the point, here, here's really what this clip is about, because uh, when they asked the fans in terms of snubs, 52% uh, said Damian Lillard. The Westgate Las Vegas Sportsbook had the Portland Trail Blazers winning uh, 27, uh, 26 and a half games this year. That was the over under total for their team wins. The mm -hmm. Portland Trail Blazers are 26 and 27, which means they're going to surpass their total likely before the All Star break. With the loss of Lamarcus Aldridge, with the loss of Wes Matthews, um, that team under Terry Stotts, who has proven himself to be not a good coach, but a top six or seven coach in the league, are sitting at 500 and could almost and might, might make a playoff spot and get crushed by the Warriors, doesn't matter. Okay, Damian Lillard, um, although some injury, and C.J. McCollum you can make a case for also, who stepped up as a great backcourt partner. You know, they lose Wes Matthews and C.J. McCollum, the pride of Lehigh, coming out of nowhere and scoring in volume for that team too. But just the fact that Lillard, the de facto leader of that team, has an ident almost identical record. They're a game behind the Houston Rockets means, yes, Damian Lillard should be in the All-Star game over James Harden. I know everyone We think everyone thinks that I hate the Houston Rockets, and I hate James Harden, and I hate Dwight Howard. I do not like Dwight Howard. I don't find the Rockets' brand of basketball to be the most entertaining form of basketball to watch, and I've grown to respect James Harden's game. I get it, okay? He's a good player. Get his points per game, but he's shooting worse this year. He's shooting just over 42%. Damian Lillard is an overall better player right now in the year 2015-2016 than James Harden is. Mm -hmm. Not last year. Last year, James Harden was a top three MVP candidate. This year, he's not. And the fact that Damian Lillard doesn't get voted in by the coaches of all people put, play, being a part of a team who wasn't supposed to win 25 games by the end of the season, let alone now, with at least 30 games left to play, is a travesty. Does it come down to the, to the positions? Is that one of the main reasons? The well, well, the there's thing too is, many is, guards in the as league. As I'm saying, so if you're putting Harden probably at the two, right, and you're going to have, and the one, it's going to be Steph, Chris Paul, and Russell Westbrook, who are th three-point guards that are better than Damian Lillard. 
they're better players than Damien Lillard. I know. It's a competitive field, and that's so you got to put. But, but the thing is, you, I get that. But you also they vote not based on point or shooting guard. Mm -hmm. They vote based on front court. Okay, and, and back court. court. It's understandable. Backcourt being the guards. Um, yeah, there's only a few things I wanted to throw He's also out. having his best statistical season. I know he has a, a, a he's foot. A he's at 24.3 points uh, shooting per game, right, and 7.1 uh, assists per game. It's impressive. But a point that's made here is it's not blow your mind impressive is what they said. And I agree with that. Blow your My mind. mind is blown! It's not, but <laughs> in, I'm, uh, I'm talking about Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins because they're in terrible teams as well. well terrible, but bad teams. And they're standing, teams standing out... To the point where you're looking at them and you're thinking to yourself, holy shit, they deserve a spot in this All-Star game because look what they're doing for their team. They're still averaging an outrageous amount of points in comparison with their players around them. Damian Lillard is playing very well and I think he, he's got two things that aren't going for him is that he's in the most competitive position that there might even like, might have been for there's an argue, years. There's an argument to make that the point guard position this year is the most competitive, competitive. I've That's ever seen argument. in my it's, life. And it's the same thing. We, were talk we just played a what-if game. Where we are trying to fit a player into the point guard yeah, position. Right. Dan's trying to clock. have me move Steph Curry to the two so he can fit Chris Paul in there. And that's okay because these the point guards are so transcendent Wrong. in the no. way they're playing. So Wrong. I think that Don't it's still care. a good case, but I'm just playing the advocate. You know of what? Devils. Portland, stand up for you. Stand your boy. up for I love Damon Portland. Lord. Rip City, I'm, a, I'm in for you guys. CJ McCollum should have been in the, in the consideration. Um, and by the way, Dirk would have been more in the consideration to me and it would have been considered a, a huge snub. If he was still shooting like 50, 50, 90. But that kind of fell off. And, I mean, credit to the Mavs, though. They're playing really well this season. Uh, I'm going to touch on DeAndre really quickly. Um, DeAndre is a force of nature, obviously, on the, on the glass. But it's such a different player when uh, Blake Griffin's not in that lineup. Um, granted, I will be the first person to always say, no Chris Paul, DeAndre Jordan's garbage player. It's just a testament to how great of a player Chris Paul mm -hmm. is. And I don't mean garbage in the way that um, he's, he becomes hurtful or a negative impact on the team, I mean that without one of the best point guards pure in the league and maybe of all time, not the greatest, but one of the best pure point guards of all time in Chris Paul, uh, setting him up in the court vision and how he rolls off the screens, he's such a high IQ player that without, if Chris Paul was never there, I don't see... DeAndre Jordan doing much besides just being an epic, epic rebounder. rebounder. Yeah. But Chris Paul can set him up for those great flushes. That's why he gets so many double doubles. Also, I hate to say it, but because you can't make your free throws, it becomes an unbearable form to watch, which I think hurt him in the voting. Mm -hmm. If he dunked on Brandon Knight like he did a few years back, if you remember he killed he literally killed Brandon Knight. Yeah, Brandon Knight is dead. I'm so sorry, Brandon Knight, rest in peace. <laughs> uh just once this season, that might have been enough for me to be like, yep, throw him in the All-Star yeah. game. And that's becoming a competitive position as well now. When you look at players like Anthony the Davis, stretch, DeMarcus Cousins. The stretch Cousins. three to five, you mean? Yeah, it's just... Threes play five, five plays three, center plays power forward, power fair plays fucking shooting guard. It's it's great to watch, and it's hard to decide. It's a hard job. The fans voting is easy enough. You just place it on the fans. Kobe's going to get the votes. But when it comes down <laughs> to the coaches choosing it, Wait, it's tough. I'm not done. Uh, Gordon Hayward, I'll do a Ben Manquitz. Please. <laughs> Please. Francis, you said uh, there's one huge snub, and that's the fans. Why is that, real quick? I just, like, trust me. I grew up in the UK, listening to Sting, all that good <laughs> stuff. But an all-star game? With Sting? Really? <laughs> With Sting? I mean, Sting and Drake. It's, it's going to be Drake. You, know, you know Drake's going to be That's there. the thing I was saying. Like, I would expect Drake to headline it. Maybe have even Drake and Meek Mill share the stage. That would be great fun. Now, who knows? Either way... A bad idea. I, I just didn't think Sting Not would be idea. the name to grasp the, the outside fans coming in to watch the performance. I had it's nothing. It's 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 not exactly. It's like it's the same idea of Coldplay playing the halftime show. I love Coldplay. Do they halftime build up, uh, put on a show band? No, they're a Valentine's Day romance. Have a little uh, makeout session in the back of the court, whatever, something like that, or the back of the stage. They're the band for that. Beyonce was. Absolutely the right partner for that show. So Sting needs to have a Beyonce by, us, by his side. Lil' Kim, bring her out. Queen B, <laughs> comment below. Snubs. The original. Who is snubbed? If you don't say Damien Lillard, I don't know what to tell you. Like, favor, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Right, Sam.